Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Noodle Journey, where I'll be having a look at Sapporo Ichiban's Miso Ramen in a bowl. Is there anything more comforting than a nice bowl of miso soup? Who doesn't love miso soup, right? Yeah, I think the first time I said that was right before I ate Lotus Foods White Miso Ramen back in episode 10, and that didn't go so well. But I should have much better luck with Sapporo Ichiban because, well, they're not garbage. This might be the most famous Sapporo Ichiban flavor on the internet because it was the focus of a very popular noodle hack a couple years ago that I feel like every food blog picked up on. Essentially, while this is cooking, you mix up a beaten egg, a spoonful of Kewpie mayonnaise, and a shaved garlic clove all in a bowl, and then you stir it all together with the broth once this is done cooking. Uh, that hack works on a lot of different noodles, but I believe the Sapporo Ichiban miso flavor was singled out as the original one to do it to. Uh, or I guess that was the one that was on hand when whoever started it filmed the hack. Who knows for sure. Anyway, if you're interested and have never seen it, you can find a ton of other YouTubers who've already done it if you're curious. The only other thing mildly interesting to note here uh, is that a very helpful member of a Facebook group I'm in shared that Sapporo Ichiban's miso ramen here was the first ever instant miso ramen product, dating back to the 1960s. It took them three years of trial and error to develop their perfect miso blend, uh, which they say has six different types mixed together to create their signature miso flavor. That's pretty cool. This little bowl certainly has a lot of hype to live up to. As with their original shio and tonkatsu flavors, this comes in packs or bowls, with the bowls being around $2 each and the packs being sold individually or in multi-packs anywhere from $1 to $2 per pack, depending on where you buy them. And they're available almost everywhere. You get garnishes if you buy the bowls, but generally a lower price point if you buy the packs. Your choice. My local H Mart has these bowls all the time, so check your local stores if you have difficulty finding these online. So enough chit chat, let's take a look at the sodium and open this up. Miso soup is always a salty affair, so it should come as no surprise that this has 2100 milligrams of sodium in it, which is 90% of your daily allowance. All right, I'm only peeling back halfway because these have to steep. But inside, you can see those always reliable Sapporo Ichiban noodles. And we've got two packets, a soup packet and a garnish packet. The soup packet is, of course, powdered miso, soy sauce, various spices, and yes, dashi stock made from fish, which is reasonably authentic. Uh, what's not so authentic is the garnish packet that contains five kinds of vegetables. And I'm not sure what to think of this garnish pack, really. You go to a Japanese restaurant, you order miso soup, and what comes in it? Tofu, green onion, and seaweed, right? Uh, well, this garnish pack contains bok choy, cabbage, carrot, leek, and... Yeah, you probably noticed already, corn. Seriously? I mean, the other stuff is mostly fine, but no seaweed? It's surprising, right? Not just me? Maybe it's me. Uh, a couple other things with the ingredients. For the dairy-minded, there is also milk powder in this bowl. But to confound matters, the pack version of this is vegan and also comes with a shishimi togarashi spice powder, which is a seven spice chili pepper seasoning. This bowl does not appear to come with it. So if you want spicy vegan miso, get the pack version. If you want the garnishes and don't mind the dairy and fish in here, get the bowl version. Uh, so let's see how this turns out. Uh, first, the usual reminder, do not microwave this unless it says you can, you cannot. You peel back the lid halfway. We're gonna put both packets into the bowl and then add boiling water to the fill line. Close it up and let it steep for three minutes. So let's assemble this. Time to add the boiling water and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. Time to stir everything up. Okay, looks good. Smells good. 
Smells like miso soup. No, uh, no surprises. So let's give it a taste. All right, the noodles are just about the right texture, even though they're always a little on the thin side. But they serve the miso soup very well. I always give these a 7 out of 10 for texture, and this is no exception. Good stuff. Uh, now, there's no spice in here at all, so 0 out of 10 on spiciness. Obviously, if you're buying the version of this with Togarashi, that will change that score. And so let's talk flavor. Now we know from my intro that this is a blend of miso, so it is not specifically white, yellow, or red, but rather Sapporo Ichiban's own formulation of those, clearly leaning towards the darker side of things. It's really tasty. Uh, it's nice and salty, but not ridiculously so. The umami flavor is excellent. I definitely taste some onion extract, giving it a little zip. A lot of sweetness from the cabbage. Maybe even a little garlic, but not much. Uh, but it's fine. This doesn't really need that much garlic to be tasty. And, um, yeah, the vegetables are fine. They're not my favorite combination. And I don't see the point in the corn. But they taste like what they're supposed to taste like, and they do provide some extra texture. Uh, I should also mention that even though, of course, there is fish in the ingredients like we talked about, this does not have a fishy flavor at all, at least not to me. So if you hate seafood, but you like miso soup, this should not bother you. Uh, this is miles better than some of the miso soup I've reviewed before, and as a comforting, warm bowl of miso soup, this reminds me of what I'd get at a sushi restaurant more than any other instant product I've tried. I like this, and I will buy it again. This is an 8 out of 10 for me overall. So this isn't quite as complex as what you get with Maruchan Gold or Nissen Rao's miso flavors or, of course, Marutai's red miso soup. But it is a very accessible, straightforward bowl of soup from a company that clearly cares about creating a unique miso blend. I'm certainly going to have to seek out the version of this that comes with the Togarashi seasoning, but for now, I'm just going to go add some of my own once the camera is off and finish this for my lunch. I think if you're a fan of miso soup in general, you'll enjoy this. And it's great that it's so easy to find and priced just right. And if you've never tried miso soup before, well, start here. This is extremely accessible. Uh, and hey, remember to try the garlic mayo hack with this if you haven't already. I've done it with other soups, and it works really well, so I imagine it's going to go very good with this. Now I've got another Sapporo Ichiban bowl that I'm going to review next because I've been sitting on it for far too long. Uh, but until then, please let me know in the comments if you have a favorite miso soup or what you think of this one, if you've tried it, or if you've done the famous hack to this and how you liked it. Please remember to click on like and also click on subscribe, and I hope you'll continue on this noodle journey with me.